everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. As you all know, my studio is an experimental place where we do things which um, <clears throat> may or may not work out but which are usually interesting. And um, today I, I have been in a very cross mood this morning because lots of things have gone wrong in my world here in France. Um, but I'm going to try and pick myself up, myself up off of the floor, get my teeth untangled from my tongue and uh, say something sensible and at the same time paint something completely relaxing to take my mind off French bureaucracy. So I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I'm just going to go right ahead and do this. Now, here I have a water pen. Uh, no, I don't. Here I have a water brush. I have not used these until now, but I just yesterday um, received one of these free from um, uh, Viva, 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 what's it called? Viviva, 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 Viva, Viviva yes, who um, sent me, kindly sent me the coloured um, paper paints, sets, these little things, colour sheets they call it, and they're really cool, lovely, beautiful colours, but um, so I tried those out yesterday using an ordinary brush. Um, but they had sent this because they feel, I think, that this is a good idea. So I'm going to use that today, but I'm not going to use it with their paints because I don't feel quite relaxed enough for that. So what I'm going to do, I have here, as you can see, the palette that I used the other day for painting something. I can't remember what. Um, and I've got alizarin crimson, uh, cadmium red, cerulean blue. That's the end of it. I've got to get some more of that because I'm nearly out. Um, quinacridone gold and um, I don't know what that is, it looks as if it might be turquoise blue or phthalo blue or something and I'm going to challenge myself to paint some little birdies in those colours and in those colours only. So my first step is going to be to um, give them something to stand on so I'm just going to put a branch across like that, just something very simple and then I'm going to put outlines of uh, little birds on here. This is my um, Vivava, Viva, I must get this right, Viviva. This is my Viviva sketchbook which I used yesterday to do the um, to do the swatching of the colours and then I painted this um, landscape of uh, cactuses um, and sunset in the desert which I have to say I am quite impressed with because it was mostly an accident so it just goes to show. I love that colour, I think that is just brilliant and notice the purple which I put in right at the very end for the ground. Um, I'm going off track, track a bit here but I just have, I'm so excited by this colour. Um, the purple that I put in for the ground just sets off the orange so well if you take that away it looks much, much duller, but with the purple, it really springs out at you. And this color here, this um, iridescent turquoise that uh, Viviva kindly provided me with, I think it makes a wonderful sky. So I'm going to be doing more of these sunsets and uh, maybe a bigger one. That's quite exciting. I am quite excited by that. Anyway, so I'm using the same paper because I liked that paper. I, th I think it's really good. So we're just drawing some little birds here and uh, just going to make them cute. So to make things cute, you want to put their eyes really close to their noses um, and not, uh, not too far away because they look really weird if you do that. So that's number one and uh, there's going to be five and I'm going to put the second one, the third one, or the second one here. And I'm using an idea for this which I got from Pinterest. Um, I'm not going to claim that it was entirely my own idea, but I'm going to paint them in my own way. So there's number two and then number three. It's 
going to go in here. It's a little bit too high. And I'm going to use, before you drift off and get bored and disappear, I'm going to use a different method of painting. I'm going to use a different method of painting. Um, so, So, uh, so keep watching. So there's number four. Nice fat little birds with tails like that and little feet. So number five is going to be here. And don't worry, we're not going to paint them in great detail, so uh, although there are five, they're not, uh, not going to be a big challenge. And uh, his little beak there, and two eyes. His head is a bit too high too. I tend to do that. I tend to make their heads too pointed. Bring that back down again. A bit of wing. Okay, so there we are. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my water brush, which I filled with water. And I'm going to wet, I hope, I'm going to wet the bird, first of all, looking at it from the side to see where the water has gone, and into the tail. This is, I hope this is going to work. And then I'm going to just pick up some colour from my palette. This is cerulean blue, and I'm going to drop it in to the water <coughs> that's already on the bird. And it won't go past the boundary where the water is. It hopefully will spread and give a nice effect, a nice, hopefully delicate effect. And if you haven't tried one of these water brushes before, honestly, I would <coughs> highly suggest it. Now to clean the brush, I discovered yesterday, you don't dip it in water, you just wipe it. I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted here and everybody probably knows this, but I didn't until yesterday. You don't need to wash it off in water, you just wipe it on a cloth. So then we come back again and I give it a little squeeze and drip out some water, spread it out. I'm not going to touch the other bird to try to keep each bird slightly separate for a bit at least. So then and his tail. If you like delicate paintings, this has got to be a great way to go. So now we're just going to drop some paint into the head of this one and let it spread. And then I'm going to pick up some quinacridone, oops, some quinacridone gold, about 10 tons of it. Bring that down the front like that and into the tail. And 
then um, maybe I'll go up here to this one. While those two are running together. And don't forget the tail. And uh, let's make this one pink. And drop some red in on the top. And just push the paint down. some pink in his tail. And we won't fiddle with it, we just let it move as it wants. Clean the brush. Come back again to this one, a little drop of water. If you're working in a confined space or you don't have much in the way of equipment, I think you could uh, really um, use this method of using the water brush and just a little sketch pad like this and a few little paints, even these ones on the um, color strips, perfect really for um, People who are in quarantine, for example, if you have to stay in and you've got nothing you can do, I mean, just get someone to give you a set of watercolours and you can spend hours just playing. With You don't need a big studio. And when when it's bled in a little bit, you can just come in and drop a bit more in and let that move around as well a little bit. And we'll put the beaks and the eyes in later. I'm just going to drop a little bit of an orange colour in there a little bit. And um, let's make, should we make this one green? Whoops, I haven't wet. Uh, yeah, the cerulean blue and quinacridone. Gold, give us a lovely bright green. More yellow. Oh, be quiet, Oriole. Okay, now we need to let those um, do their thing and I'm just going to draw in the branch that they're standing on like that. And we have a couple of options for the next thing, but I think Probably a good idea to let that dry a bit first before we try to put in any further details. So we'll just let that do its thing and dry. Be back in a minute. Hello, Lottie. Who's a beautiful girl? So it's nearly dry and I'm going to just uh, come in now with some slightly darker colour and drop that in so it can run a bit more. Thank <laughs> you. 
and uh, let's put a nice bit of dark And then the red, make that a bit mauvish. It's quite a different technique because you need to, well you don't need to, but because it's a water brush you can just drop water in and let it flow. And it's quite an interesting method. It's going to come out a little bit more random. So I think what I need to do now is think about the eyes and um, I think I'll probably use my uh, my um, <coughs> watercolour pencils, my Aquarat. <coughs> uh, let's see if I can do the feet first. And where it's damp, it does a really nice job of making a nice dark, it kind of bleeds in like that and then if we that one's too wet but I can do the eye there and there there and then as far as the mouth goes the beak I think we want to use a fine liner Naturally, and it's quite nice where I've got little layers of colour in the tail there. So I've just put another veil layer there and there. And now I'm going to let them dry again and go and see why the cat's meowing yet again. Okay, so that's dry. Um, so now I can just come in with a little bit more colour if I want to darken it down a little bit. Still using my uh, water brush, experimenting, finding out what it can do, what I can do with it, and uh, how useful that would be if I was painting. You could use this in a car, couldn't you, really? Um, okay, so maybe just a little bit more variation in colour here and the red one as well just pop a little bit more on the head there and this purpley one purpley pinky colour a little bit on the wing perhaps another couple of strokes on the tail You could use it on an aeroplane if you were flying. You could you could use it in the car for sure. Because one fill of water actually goes quite a long way. How much is it still? Yeah, it's still nearly half full. Now I know this isn't a what you would call a massive, huge work of art, and it certainly isn't a splishy, splashy, uh, loose painting from the heart, but it's fun, it's pretty, it's nearly done. I'm going to do some um, spatter, it's going to go all over my table, but never mind, there's the pink spatter. The little red spatter.
and blue. And if you wanted to, you could put some leaves in or you could do all sorts of other kind of cool stuff. You can also break up or smush, as someone said, some of the spatter beads. Make it a little bit more loose. And there we are. You could come in again with a pen and you could do more lines on the birds if you wanted to. You could elaborate them a bit more. But there we are. Five pretty little birds for a Saturday morning. Hope you enjoyed that. And um, give me a like and subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Oh, don't forget to go over to the website dianeanton.com where you can pick up the sketches of all the paintings that I've been doing, almost all of them. Just a few of the very simplest don't have sketches. So if there's one missing, either ask me if it's coming up later, because it might be, or else I'll just let you know. Like, for example, the pebbles. I don't think I put the pebbles up because I think that should be something that you make up as you go along. But I know some people have problems with the shapes of birds and it does take a while to get that right. So this might be good practice if you're looking to do bird shapes. Um, not biologically correct, but um, pretty nevertheless. Um, and that's that then. So I'll say goodbye for now and I'll go back out into the rain and do lunch. So I'll speak to you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye.